the Thoughty or Tea podcast. We always kind of said, we'll give it a go, Tom, you know, and then we did the prep around it, didn't we, and tried to kind of um, find the best way to kind mm. of um, support you to do those things, even though they're a challenge. And I think that was the good thing about you, is you would always give it a go. Well, you I mean, you, you taught me but, from a young age to give stuff um, a go, and, you know. and We always said, have your autism in your back pocket kind of thing if you need it, but don't say I can't do it because yeah. uh, just give it a go you know if you don't want to you don't want to but just try it so it feels like a lot of a lot of parents a lot of people mm. kind of go like to the two extremes mm. they're either like mm, they can't do anything so we're not going to expose them to it mm. or they're like they have to do everything that's expected of them and they have to do all these mm. things and if they don't do it then that's a bad thing and that they should be punished or they should be mm. you know whereas with with you you know growing up with you as my mom it was kind of like um i i was exposed to that stuff but then mm. if i needed to i i could exit mm. and it wouldn't be mm. like a an, an expectation or an issue that yeah. i couldn't cope with it I think that, that that's the kind of dynamic that really works work for me because I still got the experience of it, but then I felt safe enough to exit if I... Because quite often we'll say to kids, right, if, if we're going to commit to this, we're going to do it week after yeah, week. week after week, you have to. Uh, actually, it doesn't work with older, maybe with my younger son it did, but not with mm. you, Tom, mm. so yeah, absolutely. But I also recognise that some parents will really struggle with their children with autism going to activities and doing things like that because you maybe you're on your own maybe your child has no sense of danger and that kind of thing and that yeah. is tricky so i do recognize you can't always do that with your children no but it's, it's about it's about the adjustments mm -hmm. though isn't it that it you is do. doing something that challenges them a little bit yeah bit by bit so it's not support. so exposing that it just mm -hmm. causes them to mm -hmm. find life just an overwhelming yes. and... yeah because life is life and you have to have little tasters to know that actually i know how this is gonna go so the next time i do it whether i like it or not i know how predictable it's gonna mm. be and eventually i'll be able to cope with that because i know about that and that experience or that sensation and I can deal with it more so you kind of things get worse before they get better I guess and it's writing it down sometimes I hope you guys can hear me okay <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great you're doing great it's an awful voice to listen to <laughs> for an hour and a half <laughs> well um I mean going a bit further because I know we were talking about how it was hard to, to get me support. Like, in an ideal world, mm. what would you have wanted mm. for me or what, what what do you think would have been helpful either from the school or from mental health systems? I would have wanted a coordinated team around you and us as a family mm. um, that were trained in autism, that were trained in sensory, were trained in mental health. Um, so it's not kind of one size fits all, but kind of mm. got, had the chance to get to know you and, and kind of fed that back into school and into the family as well. So it was more joined up. Um, I think that would have worked better. And also, I think, which is really powerful and, um, uh, particularly in schools, is peer awareness. And, yes. Um, yeah. And other kids, and, you know, so you identify this child as being bullied for whatever reason and just giving them a voice or being their voice to say, actually, this is the reason why this is what you can do to help. This is what you could do to support and, and kind of turn it on its head a little bit. Mm. So... So that's, that's something else that I found uh, yeah. with my, my teaching as well. This is so powerful. When I've done in primary schools before with teachers, uh, the child has always become more powerful and kind of has a voice and is able to change things because whether or not they're able to tell their story and 
what they find difficult if other children are aware then they don't it's kind of more uh, not I hate to use the word but more normalized and then yeah. it just becomes accepted you know and acceptance we can ask for ultimately mm. really I think it would have been really mm. good for me to have like a like an mm. like a role model that mm. was autistic that you know like mm. when, when I went mm. into into schools and Seeing the seeing the, other, the kids and stuff. Like, there were no programs, no films, nothing. No. There was Rain Man. Yeah. Wasn't there? And that was it. So everybody thought everybody that was autistic behaved like Rain Man. And that's just not the case. It's very stereotypical. And um, But even just, just someone someone that I could mm-hmm. who was older who, you know, was doing stuff that mm-hmm. that I wanted Definitely. to do and had their yeah. you know, their their life like mm-hmm sorted and their adjustments sorted in in daily life and just someone to like talk to about being autistic I think would have been really helpful but I think you know a lot of lot of autistic people you know we just have such a hard time in life it's hard for us to get into those positions where we're able to to be active role models for for kids and I think it's changing overall I think it's taken a while it, but mm. I think it is changing and I think um, uh, I think kids are kind of looking you know and finding their place easier you know mm. because of more diversity but it's taking a long time coming isn't it really yeah there's so much like work that needs to be done for like preparing mm. like autistic kids mm. for manipulation and bullying and mm. I don't know exactly how the best way to go about doing that is, but I think it just it definitely needs to be mm. tackled because we we know that like long term anxiety in formative years mm. leads to development of depression mm. and mental it does, health. It does, it um, does. You know, it's it's something that really needs to be tackled. And I think that that bullying and social mm. isolation and the mm. sensory elements, the social elements at school, the absolutely just it's so impactful on like someone's long-term mental health mm-hmm. you know it's it's something that can you know follow you into adult life you know if... well to find every aspect of life scary is a really i can't imagine what that feels like really to just find everything and everyone and every sound and every feeling really mm-hmm. scary mm-hmm. um you're about to it's about to have an impact, isn't it, yeah. on your mental health and your well-being. So I think it's so important that we have that not awareness. Because awareness is just that sort of lip service saying, oh, yeah, I know about autism, I've read a bit about it. Mm. It's about about doing something about it, actually being proactive and saying, look, you know, well, there's a kid over there or there's a mate over there. Well, there's a kid over there that actually people are bullying or they're um, not being not being supported and actually just going, look, if you want to join in, you know, come and join in with us or be part of it. Mm. Or, um, our children, you people, have just got so much to offer as friends, as children, as, as colleagues, you know, and just so much to offer, really. Totally. Yeah. Completely. Just in awe sometimes, really. Mm.